First, let's pay homage to the Venerable Mong Liao Ming, to Master Sakya Zhen Kong, the Xiong Rinpoche, to His Eminence the Sixteen Dharma King Kamapa, and to Master Dukdan Tarji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa, Amitayus Tathagata. Sumu, Tutan Siti Rinpoche, all Dhamma Masters, Dhamma Educators, Dhamma Teachers, Dhamma Lecturers, Dhamma Assistants, Temple Directors, all Disciples present here and over the Internet, and our participating VIPs today from the Executive UN of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Secretary General Daniel Liao and Mrs. Liao, Dharma Sister Judy. And from the Taiwan government, the Chief Secretary, Mr. Zheng Peifu and Mrs. Zheng. And the Tributor School Scholars Group, the distinguished Professor Wang Jingxian, Professor Wang Li, Professor Gu Haoxiang, Professor Ye Suwen, Professor Lin Xiuqi, and Dr. Yu Jiangcheng, and a medical doctor, Lin Jinan, the president of the Taiwan Lotus Light Charitable Society, Mr. Li Chunyang, representative to the council person from Tainan City, Representative to the council person from Kaohsiung City, a general manager to the Jingyi Enterprise, Ms. Zhang Yijing, from Taiwan Film Education Institute, a director Mr. Tsang and the executor, executive director Ms. Jian Jingwen. My university same classmate, Zhu Jinsui, Xian Shen, Ji Furen, Chen Zhexiang, Mr. and Mrs. Zhu Jinsui. Producers for the Great Perfection Dharma, the nine stages of Great Perfection Dharma, Hebaja Exposition, and Development Stages of Tantrayana, the host, Dharma Sister Pajin. From CTI TV, Taiwan producers for the Gaini Dian Sang Sin Tun Dhamma Sister, Rebecca Xiaqi. My sister, Lu Sang Mei Ni Si. Good afternoon, how do you do? Good afternoon. Kamsamita Samadika.
Vigis Iman. Hola amigo. Oh, thank you. Last week we had the Homa of Medicine Buddha, Medicine Tathagata, and this week it's the Amitai Tathagata. And thank you for the blessings of the Medicine Tathagata that after the Homa. That grandmaster's arm is free from any pain right after the homa of medicine today last week. And moreover, beyond the gratitude to Medicine Buddha, also to Dr. Zheng Senlong, he also gave me all kinds of medicines. And then my brother Yang Zhong he did some folk treatment uh, traditional physical therapy and lifted uh, this arm to correct it last Saturday night he helped me uh, to correct this arm, the right arm, and many other disciples who give me salon pass, all of them, all kinds of painkillers and injury treatments, uh, far infrared. Many disciples. I could open a stall for Western and Chinese uh, pain and inflammation treatment center. And the disciple also initiated. Uh, entice many other disciples to recite mantras to eradicate this pain. But the good thing is, after the Medicine Buddha Homa, Saturday and then Sunday, and then there's no more pain. From then until now, there's no more pain. So I had good sleep every night. And before, when I had pain, I would woke, wake up in the middle of the night because of the pain. So of course, there are also the doctors, the my brother Yang Zhong, and then the blessings through the mantra chanting and giving all kinds of medicines for painkillers, for inflammations, and many things. And Salon Pass, Mesilitan, which is like Japanese. So lots of stuff, so we ah, could have thank opened you. a pharmacy at home. So thank you, everybody. Ah, 
So today we had the Homa of Amitayus Latakata, and we we'll also pray to Amitayus Buddha that by your longevity nectar, that he holds with his two hands. We pray that he use his nectar longevity vase to bless all participants and those over the internet and disciples that did not participate. That we hope that by the nectar water from the nectar bottle base could uh, eradicate all sicknesses and guide many bardo spirits to be reborn into pure lands. The nectar base held by Amitayus Buddha, the most important symbol of Amitayus is that nectar vase. And he could use the nectar vase to bless all beings and also to guide them to be reborn into pure lands. So the functions is for, for what? health, eradication, bardo, deliverance, purification. Uh, karma eradication and uh, curing sicknesses. So Amitayus is also referred as the king of the ambrosia or nectar tathagata, also the Buddha of boundless uh, life or a Buddha of infinite light or infinite life. A boundless light, a boundless life. So all participants would receive the empowerment of the sweet nectar and the empowerment for longevity and the empowerment for health. Health, like a health, uh, uh, health, uh, 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 as I remember in Tibet, in many Rinpoches, in meeting me, they would say a greeting, chasitere, which means may all be auspicious. And they would also say health and long life. So health and long life. They typically would say this two kinds of greetings. Actually, it is difficult to be healthy living a long life. Today, I went to the sixth floor. In climbing to the seventh floor, I told Simu, Master Lian Xiang, that one day, all we could reach is the sixth floor, because we couldn't climb up to the seventh floor. Today, I went to the place where we do book signing, and the place for the offering of hatas for the primary supplicants. And I saw the wife of Zhang Wenrui on a wheelchair. And Zhang Wenrui, how old is he now? Zhang Yaoren, is he here? 
He's outside. How old is Zhang Wenrui? Eighty-four. And his wife. You don't so close to 84. So they're from Zhanghua, the father and mother of Zhang Yaoren. So in seeing them, I thought of the past. Master Lian Xin, Liu Wangqing. He's over 90. 90 years old. He used to climb the stairs. Now he couldn't and he can't anymore. So he lived. On the lower floors, and he would take the elevators. So thinking of Master Lian Xin, Master Liu Wenqing, thinking of Master Yu Yin So, Master Lian Liang. Master Lian Zhen from Indonesia. They all have gone to the Buddha lands. Lian Liang, Abura, Lian Si, Lian Si, Liu Yin Si, Lian Zhen from Indonesia. Lian Zhen from Indonesia. Several of these masters were together before, and they were really driven, active. These days, many elderly cannot uh, climb the stairs. And I told Sumu that one day we will not be able to climb the stairs to the seventh floor. Anymore, all we could reach is the sixth floor. Sometimes we see people with the long life. It is better not to see them. Maybe when I reach 80, I cannot be seen anymore. It's best for you not to see me. Because as a human being age, that the body would weaken and we would have all kinds of issues with our body and health. And they will all appear together. It's not something to be seen. So these people that were together before, like from Zhang Hua, Xi Sui Feng, she's also gone to the Buddha land. Many elderly disciples have gone. Seeing other people die, my heart burns. Not because of because of other people, but thinking that maybe it would be my turn soon. And our classmate. From our class, there were several of the classmates that had passed away. The one who passed away was Xin Hong. 
passed away first is by the family named Hong. And Zheng Ying. And also a classmate from elementary schools. Wang Jin Xiong. Wang Jin Xiong. There are two good best friends. One is called Wang Jin Xiong. And he helped me a lot. And he had a heart attack and passed away. And there was another best friend called Zhuang Zhengke. And he was uh, the chief of a mountaineering association and he died climbing Ali San, Mount Ali. And Chen Zhengfa died of a heart attack. And he had a very strong arm. And he's the goalkeeper for soccer. He was very strong, but he died of a heart attack. Several of our classmates passed away. Also in our survey engineering college, the one with the best, uh, the best uh, performance, best grades, and he earned a PhD. And he came back to Taiwan and he passed away. Many people had passed away. So seeing other people die from afar, my heart burns. It's not because of those people, but thinking that it's, it may be my time soon. So in this environment, Seng Yen Lu is already 71. In the 80s, cannot climb the stairs anymore. When I was 60 years old, I was uh, living in retreat in Taiwan and I uh, uh, I applied for a Taiwanese passport and they gave me a passport for 10 years. The expiration, the expiration is 10 years. So I was thinking that when the passport expires, I would be 70. Now the passport expired. So when I started my retreat. I was in my 50s. When I was about 60, I applied for this passport. And when it expired, I would be 70. So I applied for another passport. And when this passport expires, I would be 80. But can I live to be 80? I am in Baba. I don't dare to say or to think of it. Even if you live to be 80, can you still climb the stairs? That's a question mark. So long life make me think that there is no health alongside long life. So you want to have a long life and health, but it is almost impossible. But we pray to the Amitayu Satagata that you use your sweet nectar and bless the elderly, all the disciples, so that they not only gain longevity, but they also gain health, great health.
health and the long life. Health and long life. 这个今天在这里啊，祝福大家。So here, I would like to wish you health and long life. I wish everybody health and long life. <laughs> 难得今天呢、啊，好像人数少一些。Uh, uh, uh, there aren't that many people today. The book signing uh, lasted very short, and the hatha offering by the primary supplicants was sparse and far in between. It ended very fast. And today was about the first time we started the ceremony on time. We never had this before. Thank you to Amitai Buddha uh, to bestow this promptness for the ceremony today. It's the only time, so we should remember it. It's worth remembering. So now let's continue on the Great Perfection Dharma. The fifth empowerment is the touch empowerment. The Guru would be holding Two items, coarse or rough, and fine or smooth items, to touch on all the channels on the body while reciting Sanskrit words. This is touch empowerment. So, rough and smooth. So. The touch would feel it. This is called the touch empowerment. But we need to change the feeling into emptiness. So form, sound, smell, taste, touch. That's the five dust empowerments. So already closing of the five thieves, thieves or robbers. So in Chinese it's called Zai, but in Cantonese it sounds like your kid. But it's not that. So closing off from the five thieves, touch two is one of the five thieves. Uh, a simple example would be there is a habit for a monk. The habit of a monk was is it okay to talk about it? Should be fine, right? We didn't talk about the name. When he walks, he likes to touch other people's bodies. So if he touches Grandmaster, there is no feeling, but he doesn't touch, he is a monk, he doesn't touch other men, but he especially touch women. So as he walks, he will touch women. And after he touches the woman, the woman 
turned around and said, Oh, it's a monk, but why don't you just uh, say greeting? You know, why do you need to touch some women? Some ladies don't like to be touched. To be uh, touched with his body. One time, Grandmaster went to Malaysia. Lots of people, and it was very crowded. And then all the security guards are all ladies. And they are around Grandmaster, and all the disciples were being crowded on, and then the woman was just pushing forward. So, at that time, it was my, uh, my uh, spontaneous reaction. I use my hand to push and then <laughs> I touch something like a like a cotton ball or like a sponge because I just kind of push with my hand and that uh, touch feeling was different and I lift up my eyes and it turned out it turned out that I was pushing on the uh, on the two on the boobs of the female guard so it felt different so I just pushed and it was too like a sponge and I said sorry <laughs> but that the female guard was extremely happy. <laughs> she kept laughing, smiling at me. She didn't look angry, she was laughing. So it should have been fine. <laughs> so the touch feeling was different. As soon as you uh, touched it, you would know. Of course, Grandmaster is not Chen Wei Ting. It's a uh, it's, uh, sexual harassment in Taiwan. Because Grandmaster can control himself, can control his bodies, his hands, his arms, his legs, but some people cannot control themselves. So they are sick. But as spiritual cultivator, we can control our own heart, our own mind our body, our hands, our feet. One time I was giving spiritual consultation and there was an elderly lady kneeling next to me in my office. So I was give, providing the answers to her questions and then I felt that Something touched my foot, and there was a hand that was uh, moving upward, touching upward. And I took a look, and it was an elderly lady. And I said, could you please not touch my foot? And she said that I am respectful toward Grandmaster. It's okay if you just touch, you know, really quickly my foot, but don't, don't touch upward toward my leg. It didn't feel good. Some people, some disciples, 
when they are bowing or making prostrations, they like to touch Grandmaster's feet because there is such a custom in India and that shows respect and sometimes they use their head, their forehead to touch your foot to show utmost respect. So as if it's the foot, the feet of the Tathagata are stepping on their heads. But this grandma's hands are rubbing upward in my, on my leg. And she said it was respect, so I said, mm, no, and not even in the international etiquette, like to like the Ajisi, the chef that was involved in the scandal. And she said that uh, his lips were numb when she was kissing the girl, and she, he said that that was an international etiquette. So what kind of numb, numbness is kind of a feeling, a good feeling. Some touch feeling is good and some touch feeling is not. So when Grandmaster is uh, giving blessings by touching the heads, and there was a lady kneeling very quietly waiting for the blessings and there would be some men that would walk towards uh, behind the lady and then when grandmaster is approaching he would stick out his head and touch his cheek to her cheek waiting for the grandmaster's blessing. When grandmaster saw that, I know that the lady does not like that feeling, but the man would have that good feeling. And then I would use force to bless him and strongly pat on him. It's to warn you that you should not touch the lady's face because there are a huge crowd of people waiting to be waiting for the blessings and there are like three, three rows of people waiting and they push forward and there's some men when they like some girls or ladies they take advantage of the time and then try to touch the lady's face with his face like that. So I often said that during the blessings on the heads, uh, you should not uh, push around and you should not uh, use the chance to get close to ladies because that's not a good feeling. So this international uh, etiquette or greeting where you can uh, kiss on the cheek, but uh, you need to, uh, to be mutual and to be mutually respectful and mutually know that mutually acceptable, otherwise it shouldn't be done. And Simu set the rule that Grandmaster can only kiss uh, children uh, uh, under five years old, children under five. But there are kids, because Grandmaster loves children. They are all really cute, lovable, so like a grandpa. Just grandpa always loves uh, their grandchildren, his grandchildren. 
As I was driving in America, there was a car. That said, that road. If you cannot get what you want from your parents, you will always get it from your grandparents. It was in English, and Simu and I were on the same car. So things that you cannot get from your parents. You can ask for it from your grandparents, and you would definitely get it. So grandpas and grandmas always love grandchildren, and grandmaster is that age. So grandmaster always find a little kid to be really cute and lovely. And sometimes they have all. Um, Mucus, all kinds of uh, stuff on their face, <laughs> and then the little kids with all the saliva and everything, and then grandma's face become smeared with that. And sometimes they also have cold, and they have runny nose, and then they, they all would be smeared on grandma's face. But I feel very happy. Why is it only for children under five? How about under ten? How old is eating? Eight. It's okay. Eating is eight, and Ping Er is three. They are really cute. They're girls. They are really beautiful. And boys, they are very handsome and good-looking. And grandmaster loves children, especially enjoy them. So that kind of feeling is different. That's also a touch kind of feeling. When grandmaster gives blessings on the heads, everyone would have different feelings. It's a kind of touch empowerment. Sometimes I would forget. After kissing the kid, and then there is a, a maiden, a youthful lady, I would forget. And then all of a sudden I remember, oh, she's not a, a kid anymore. I can touch, I can control my own body, mind, hands, foot. So if you're in control, then you can say that you have received the touch empowerment. And furthermore, you should not have any kind of uh, feeling, a loving feeling. Today, for book signing, there was a young lady that told me, Grandmaster, in my life, I only say I love you to Grandmaster. Master Lian Ying heard it. There was a lady. Because I didn't hear it clearly. Uh, could you repeat it, please? She said, in my whole life, the only one that I said I love you the most to is Grandmaster. 
，好像那个摄影组，类似摄影组有谁在？呃、uh, ，the a media group。The camera cameraman. Ah, you Did anyone hear? You heard? Did you hear it? Ah, that. He heard. Oh, two people. Oh, two people. You heard it? Oh, two people. 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 And she said, "I, I need to tell you that in my whole life, the one that I say I love you too is the most is Grandmaster is you. And in my heart, I said thank you. And in my heart, I thought, is it love toward her guru or is it love between man and woman?" If it is a love between a man and a woman, a love toward grandmaster, grandmaster would accept them all the same. Only the brave one would say this. An upright guru would never say that. So does it mean that I'm not upright? So I'm just saying what I think, what I feel in my heart. We should treasure each other. No big deal. Just it's like a grandpa toward her daughter. That's like a treasure. Love is divided into many different kinds. Respect toward the guru. So you say, "I see the guru. I love you. 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 In America, when we write letters, we would write "dear," so and so. We always say "dear" to anyone. We would write "dear." That is a, just a common greeting. And saying "I love you." It's a very sacred and a very supreme mutual respect and treasure that is inseparable. So you treasure each other, and that's fine. But if you don't respect and treasure each other, then that's not acceptable. So you need to be clear on this. So about touch, there's a master who loves to touch other people, touch other people's shoulder. If you touch a man's shoulder, it's okay. But if you touch a woman's shoulder, if you don't know each other and you don't treasure each other, you don't love each other, that's not good. But if you do know each other, you treasure each other, you love each other, it's okay that you touch them. If you don't, then don't touch them. So there is an ethics here, there's a rule. So in life there's a rule. So even as a master, you cannot just touch anyone as you like, or reference to, cannot touch other people. Or lay practitioners should not touch each other lightly. But if you know each other, you treasure each other, you love each other, it's fine. 
then at that time you would feel very happy to be touched. Otherwise, you would have a very spiteful feeling. But in this touch empowerment, this good and bad touch feelings uh, would merge each other until you feel nothing. The kid is about to be born, and the wife said, um, I want a boy and name him at the peak, which is meaning the peak of the life. And the husband said, oh, this is only meaningful in Chinese. Because with a family named Yang, it would mean like epilepsy. So like what Grandma just said, if you know each other, love each other, treasure each other, then touch would give good feeling. Otherwise, it would give um, bad feeling. Awful feeling. So the couple were fighting, and the woman lay on bed and didn't move at all. And the man asked, What are you doing laying there unmoved? And the woman replied, I'm dead. And the man asked, So then why are your eyes open? And the woman said, Because I. <laughs> this is also Chinese, which means, you know, I'm, I am dead with my eyes wide open. And why are you still breathing? Because I cannot uh, take on this, so I cannot swallow this breath. Meaning when you're young, it would give a happy feeling. When you're touching, but when you're old, sometimes you s it still gives you a happy feeling. But sometimes, touch feeling would uh, give a really, really appalling feeling. So. Uh, all kinds of feelings uh, depends. Uh, in the world, the one that's not that's not loyal is money, because I. You know, I go out with, with it, with the money, but then it never comes back with me. But uh, the fat on my body is most loyal because it doesn't matter what I do, it just doesn't want to leave. So the form empowerment, if you see a slim maiden wearing a very short mini skirt, then you would have feelings about it already. And if you see a fat lady wearing black clothes, you have no feelings whatsoever. That's the empowerment for the eyes, the form empowerment. That's different. So you would have different feelings or different sensations. The shortcomings of the house is to the east is a garbage dump, to the uh, uh, west is a uh, uh, snow slope, and then there is a pig farm to the north, and then to the south. And then, but you never know what, uh, where the wind would blow to. 
So that's the smell, the sensations to the smell. Maybe you would smell something foul or something uh, very pleasing. And you cannot have any feelings about this. Feelings for the eyes, for the nose should be the same. You need to eliminate this feelings. This morning I went to work and wanted to eat mango. The mango is very ripe and fragrant. So as leaving the house I took one and getting on the bus I was uh, playing on the cell phone and I placed the mango on my back pocket and as I sat as I sat down there was a fragrant smell and then the juice the yellow juice I just puked and all the people around me that saw that uh, closed their nose <laughs> to, in order to explain clearly <laughs> that I took, I grabbed a pinch and eat it <laughs> to show them that it is not my poo, but they all vomited. <laughs> This joke would explain on this feelings. As he sat down, a yellow, a yellow goo came out from his bottom, and the people around him felt really yuck because his bottom spewed out that yellow goo. And in order to show that it is actually not his poo, and he took some and put it in his mouth and everybody vomited. Everybody. So that feeling is just feelings, the vomiting is just a feeling. Actually, it's mango juice. So you had the wrong perception or sensation. So where did that sensation come from if you close your eyes and you touch something in front of you oh it's so smooth and white and soft and you feel very happy and you think you touch on something and then take off your eye mask it turns out to be a white pig. When you touch something silky and smooth and white, you have a very happy feeling. You, yeah, I cannot say it's white because you didn't see. So a feeling of a skin. But actually, it's a white pig. Then you have no feeling anymore. There is also a mistake to feeling sometimes. They all came from your mind. But you can stabilize your mind in order to enter into meditation. If you have feelings, then you would not have any meditation. Only when you reach the realm of no feelings, you would be able to enter into meditation. And this is Buddha Dharma. This is also a joke. The monk, Tang San Zhang, took his disciples to go to India and met the Tathagata from the West. 
And Takata told them, Why did you walk? You, you travel so far to India to meet the Tathagata from the West. Now all the sutras are on the internet. You can just check it on the internet. Why do you need to go there? And then the monk Tang Sen turned around to tell the monkey king, Sun Wukong, but uh, you killed the spider, so now we have no more web. That's a kind of feeling. In the past, the feeling to go to India to get the Buddhist sutras is totally different from the feeling that to get on the internet and get the sutras. Those are also kinds of feelings. The high monk asked the uh, a philanthropist, uh, do you want a, a bucket of fish or or what? Or a fish. Or a fishing rod. Or a fish. So, if, of course, I want the fishing rod because, uh, because the ray, the fish. Well, you want a fishing rod or a bucket of fish. And the man said, oh, I want a bucket of fish because I can sell the fish, then I can buy a lot of fishing rod, and then I can rent the rod, and I would earn a lot of money. And, and then the monk said, oh, I don't want to talk to a businessman. So the feelings for the monks and the feelings for the uh, businessmen are different. And you need to call, uh, you need to draw, withdraw all your feelings to enter into the realms of no feelings in order to enter into meditation. So this is the method to enter into meditation. Don't see with your eyes. Don't listen with your ears. Don't smell with your nose. And you have no more taste, no more mouth, no more feelings of touch. Only this time, you would be able to enter into true meditation. If you have a kind of sensation or feeling, of any sort, then you will not be able to enter into meditation. So, in order to be totally serene like the Buddhas and the Tathagatas, in order to reach such a realm, to have such a realm, only when you have such the serene realm, you would be able to Go higher. That's all for today.